today we have my now bi-monthly palette rankings. So I didn't try a lot of palettes between January and February, so I combined the two months. And in total, I've only tried 13 eyeshadow palettes. I feel like eyeshadow palettes just aren't as popular as they used to be, so there's less and less releases. So I don't know if these are gonna be monthly or bi-monthly, but whenever it seems appropriate, I'ma do them. So I tried a total of 13 eyeshadow palettes, and a lot of them aren't new. A lot of them are new as well, but let's go ahead and get into it starting off with number 13. Unfortunately, I think it's the palette that I'm wearing right now, but I still got a beautiful look out of it. This is just where it fell. It is the ColourPop Flirty Talk Eyeshadow Palette. This I tried off camera. I did decide to use it today. The reason that I decided to use it today is because Honestly, I used it once and I didn't feel really compelled to use it again, so I use it again just to confirm my feelings. So this is a fine palette. It's just not a color story I'm going to reach for very often because it's very, very monotone, which is very, very pink, which is not what I'm reaching for all of the time. It came out in February. It's a Valentine's Day palette. It makes complete sense, but it's just not one I'm going to reach for very often. The day that I did wear this before today was Valentine's Day. So yeah, I haven't been compelled to reach for this color story. I already have so many pink palettes in my collection. And in terms of quality, this one isn't that special. It is definitely not ColourPop's best work. It's also not their worst work. You can certainly make the palette work, but I find a lot of the shades kind of look similar on the eyelid. So let me first start off with how I did today's look so you can see them in application. I started off with the shade Head Over Heels as my original transition shade just to help things blend. And then I went into the shade right here, Your Fave, and I used this in the crease to create a pink look. Honestly, I get very similar effects on the eyelid using multiple shades in this palette, which is why I don't like it as much. A lot of the shades just look the same. And then to add some depth, I used Heart Emoji right here in the outer corner. Again, it, it kind of looks similar to a couple other shades in this palette. It also lacks in pigment, I think, and this palette is definitely lacking in depth as well. I wanted something deeper. It only gives like a vibrant hot pink kind of look, which I didn't love. The shimmers, these three right here, are a little bit more difficult to apply to the eyelid. You need to use a finger. If you use a brush, you're going to get no pigment. So I use the shade Blushing right here in the center of my eyelid. And once it's on, it's fine. It just took a little bit for me to learn how to use this palette in order to get the best look possible. And then I'll use the shade Cuddle Up right here in the inner corner of the eyelid to add some brightness. You can see I kind of went from that light to dark fade today. And this shade is very interesting. I used Be Mine in the very inner corner of the eyelid to add some texture and interest to the look. And it's kind of like a pressed glitter, but I think it's a little bit of a better quality pressed glitter. I really like this shade. It's a little messy, but I think it adds some pizzazz to the eye look because before this shade, the look was so boring and pink. There was absolutely nothing special about it. And then I finished off with this Super Shock shade in the sh name, just my type in the inner corner. So you can absolutely get a very pretty look if you are in the market for a super pinky palette. This is an option. It's more on the affordable side, but it also is not my favorite pink eyeshadow ever. I just didn't find anything special about it. It's it's a pink eyeshadow palette. It was the last place. There's you. <laughs> so moving on to number 12. I'm sorry. Ugh. It's going to be the Natasha Denona Love Face Palette. This is not a bad palette, but I again just don't find anything special about it so I haven't reached for it quite often. Finally after it was accidentally launched Natasha Denona did just reveal it. It is available for pre-order if you are interested. But you guys, I just don't think this one is worth the money. Now, I really like the eyeshadows. So if you're just going for the eyeshadows, very good quality, very, very pretty. But because my expectations are so high for Natasha Denona when she doesn't do an amazing job, it's going to automatically push my ranking down lower, which some people will argue with me about that as my rationale. But like this is my ranking, right? This is where it fell. I really did not like 
this blush right here. It was quite unflattering on me. And then the eyeshadows as well. There's four mattes and only one shimmer. I definitely felt like this palette needed another shimmer. It just wasn't her best work, which is unfortunate because it is a gorgeous color story. But I wasn't super impressed with it. I thought it was fine. It was good quality. You can check out my initial review. I don't really have too much bad to say about it other than I really didn't like the blush. But other than that, the quality was fine, but there's nothing special, nothing that stands out about this palette, especially for the price point. So it's not a bad palette, but it ranked at number 12 because I did have some disappointments about it, you know? So number 12, but finally, if you are interested in it, you can pick it up now on the Natasha Denona website, but it's very, very odd how it went down because it's not even, it's way past Valentine's Day. It's like two weeks past Valentine's Day. Very strange time to launch this. I wonder what happened behind the scenes there. Number 11, this is just in terms of color story preference because I think the quality is good. This is the Odin's Eye Planet Spirits palette. It's very, very beautiful. I've done a couple looks with this palette. I enjoy the quality of it as well. Um, it's The colors are just a little too vibrant for this boring gal <laughs> over here. They don't have too many colors in here that I feel comfortable wearing every single day. I've certainly had a lot of fun with it, but it's a bit too vibrant for my own personal preference. However, if you like the color story, you definitely can get very pretty looks. I love the way that this palette was laid out. I think it makes it very user friendly. You can pair these two colors together. You can work in a square to get a look. So I do like that aspect. But in terms of color story, it's just not something that I reached for a lot these last couple of months. So that's why it's ranking right here. Number 10 is from Nomad Cosmetics. This launched earlier in the year. This is the Verona palette. And I do believe there was a bad batch of these where I think some of the shimmers were a little bit more hard panned and the brand did the right thing and offered replacements for that. So if you've got some dud shimmers, definitely reach out. I really liked the color story of this. I had a lot of fun creating a couple of looks with this. I love this hot pink side, which is not something that I'm really gonna grab for, but I would reach for this side of the palette over the ColourPop, so that's why this one definitely ranked over the ColourPop, but I also just love this dark, cool tone, grungy side, which I think is quite unique as well. I personally haven't had any issues so far with the shimmers that they talked about, but maybe I didn't dig into the right colors, but I didn't have any issues. I think the quality on this is pretty good. I like the variety and looks that you can get with it. I like this palette. I think it's very, very nice. Number nine is also from Odin's Eye. They had a big collab collection that came out this month. This is the Sea Talk palette. Ooh, this one is really fun. I like it because there's a neutral side here, which you know I reached for, but there also is a brighter side. Again, I don't wear a ton of colors other than in my videos, so I don't reach for these colors a lot outside of my videos. I think the quality is really nice. I feel like this color story I can totally see Lauren wearing. I enjoy that there are neutral shades, but blue I don't reach for very often just as a color in general, so I'm going to get less use out of this palette, but it's very nice quality once again and if you like the color story I definitely recommend it and then this one this next one what are you number eight is an affordable palette that I wanted to share if you don't want to spend a bunch of money on an eyeshadow palette I really liked this one this is the drinks on me palette from Joa I think it's called girls night out actually from the drinks on me collection and I was not impressed with this palette at first I thought the color story was unimpressive. I swatch, I wasn't that impressed, but on the eyelid, these look like expensive eyeshadows. I don't think the mattes apply like expensive eyeshadows, but it's the shimmers here that give this magic on the eyes. They look like expensive eyeshadows. I wore this for a lot over the last couple of months because of the really great neutral shades and how pretty and sparkly they looked on the eyelids. So don't sleep on this palette. I'm not gonna tell you it's the best quality palette in the world because it's not. But if you put the right shades on the eyelids, 
it will look like the best palette. It is stunning on the eyelids and the price is really, really fantastic for what you get. Moving on to number seven, this is from Pat McGrath Labs. We had a lot of palettes launch also. So this is the eyeshadow Mothership in the shade Sublime Seduction. So I think these palettes have really great quality. This color story was a little bleh to me. So it's the least of the three of this Pat McGrath collection that I use, but really gorgeous on the eyelids. I don't have anything bad to say about this just wasn't something that I reached for the most but the quality is very nice I didn't wear too many warm looks I mean that's not fair to say I did wear a lot of warm looks but I have so many warm palettes in my collection this isn't my go-to I would say but it's a great small curation of neutral warm colors so where this palette has value is if you want a smaller pomegranate size palette to travel with and you like the warm tone neutrals this is really nice nothing special about it nothing that really stands out in the brand, but it's a little bit more portable than a lot of the other Pat McGrath options. Now this one surprised me, number five, of how often I used it. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised because mattes come in handy. And I'm always reaching for matte palettes when I want to use an individual shimmer on the eyelid, which I had quite a few that I was messing with between the Charlotte Tilbury Pop Shop launches and then Pat McGrath also launched some individual liquid shadows so I reached for this palette much more than I originally anticipated it's from Pat McGrath as well this is the velvet liaison which I did not need but it was in my drawer so I used it a lot it's just some staple eyeshadow palettes that I already own but curated into this one palette with the nice Pat McGrath formulation and while it doesn't excite me it inspires nothing within me it is quite practical and especially with the use of the shimmer eyeshadows and lid toppers that I've been using this month. Sorry, I definitely just kicked the tripod of my camera. <laughs> I actually ended up using this one a lot. So it's a handy dandy little guy. I'm not going to deny it. And then this was early January that I tried it. But it's finally coming into play here in this rankings. This is number five. This is from Pat McGrath as well. It's from the Star Wars launch that happened last year, but I didn't try this one until later. Divine Droid. I'm not moved by this palette, but I sure do have some fun with it. I was really in love with this formulation in the original holiday launch, but I feel like this one is not as good quality as the original holiday launch, but it still is a really nice formula. And this offers colors that you don't get in any other Pat McGrath palettes. So so that's why I had a lot of fun with this one. This chartreuse shade right here, ugh, so beautiful. So yeah, I mean, I don't think this is the best quality of this formulation. Seems a little lazily done, but I do individually enjoy these colors and I get a lot of fun looks using this palette that I couldn't originally get with Pat McGrath prior to this. So not a game changer, but I really, really enjoyed it. Number four is a shocker to me. I almost decluttered this. Well, not decluttered it, but gave it away. And one day I picked it up and I was like, oh, this is some high quality eyeshadow. So this is from Shu Uimura and it's the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon palette. Uh, this was a collaboration that they did with Sailor Moon. Nobody really on the internet talked about it too much. The packaging's a little chunky. It kind of looks like Claire's makeup, the way that it's laid out here and in the pans. But the quality of this is so luxurious you guys the mattes blend like butter onto the eyelids and then the shimmers are by far the best part very nice wearable colors so earlier in january when i had very few launches to try i was using this all the time as an everyday eyeshadow palette so i've got to give this credit where credit is due while it's not the most exciting eyeshadow palette and it certainly wasn't the most visually pleasing to me especially before i tried it the quality is what has made this one stand out so much. So if you like Sailor Moon, this won't be a waste of your money. It actually is really, really good quality. Number three is the last Pat McGrath palette I'm going to talk about. This is the Iconic Infatuation. I mean, this launch overall, this collection was nothing super duper special, but really great for neutral lovers. And as much as I say this is boring, I love 
these tones of colors, okay? I know I say I don't want it from Pat McGrath, but if she delivers it, I'ma buy it and I'ma use it. And I just feel like this has been a great everyday palette that I've been reaching for. Very comfortable with the colors in here. They go very well with my wardrobe as well. And it's just that really nice Pat McGrath quality. So yeah, that is why this is ranking in at number three. Number two is another sh 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 shocker to me. Was not expecting to love this one or use this one as much as I did, but this is definitely one of my most used palettes in February. This is from Florisys, and I wasn't exactly sure how much use I was gonna get out of it because as beautiful as it is, it's just a neutral palette. I also don't really like using these because the embossments are just so beautiful. But my gosh, I've been using this for events, for going out to dinner. Like this has been my go-to nighttime neutral eye palette so I can wear like a bold lip, pop some fun lashes on, and the quality is really nice. I don't think the mattes are anything to write home about. I think they could use a little bit more of a punch of pigment, but normally when I reach for this palette, I'm not going for a crazy dramatic eye anyway, so I haven't minded that. And the shimmers are so beautiful on the eyelids. So if you're a neutral wearer, you want some beautiful makeup, honestly, just to look at, this palette from Florisys is really great. I've enjoyed the quality of it a lot, and I definitely use it way more than I was initially anticipating. I knew it was my kind of color story with it being super neutral, but I did not expect to reach for it for like special events. Okay, and the, the last palette, I mean, I feel like a lot of you would know that this one would be at the top because this is kind of my dream color story. This is from Odin's Eye. It's the Flora Story palette. You know, I love the Odin's Eye formula. I love the colors. This is like muted purples, greens, sage greens, still wearable, but also still unique. As soon as I saw this palette, I knew it was gonna be a favorite of mine because of how much I love the Odin's Eye formula and how much I love this color story. So, I mean, this is number one based solely on those two factors, the formula and the color story right up my alley. I've had a lot of fun with this one. It allows me to feel comfortable in more neutral makeup while still having it be a little different. The palette's really easy for one and done, two and done eyeshadow looks. So that one is kind of on top. I will say the Florisys palette and the Odin's Eye palette, they're kind of going back and forth one and two, but today I was feeling a little more inspired by the Flora Odin's Eye palette. So anyways, that is my rankings of every single eyeshadow palette I tried in the months of January and February. Let me know if you tried any of these out. What do you think of them? And I will catch you guys in the next one. Wait, but make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel first. And then I'll see y'all. Bye guys, have a good one.